Hey guys, Libby News here, and today we're going to be picking up with Trial 4. I'm excited, but definitely nervous, kind of as always. I feel like this is probably the first trial that I'm going into, and I don't really know that I have like a prime suspect, honestly. Like, I don't really know that like I can kind of pin it down with the evidence. Like, I feel like there's some stuff you can kind of pin it down, but like there's also a lot of evidence that like we don't know exactly what it is or what it means. It's all very complicated. One of you guys said on uh, Twitter that it starts out really complicated or like it seems really complicated, and once you get to the trial, it all kind of unravels pretty easily. I really hope so, because right now I'm definitely like super confused on some things. Um, I guess there's a couple of the pieces of evidence that I have like some pretty strong feelings on. I feel like for sure Aruma was trying to kill Kokichi and I guess got killed before or when she was trying to do so. That's at least my best guess. I also think um, this will probably be a big thing. Where is it at? Oh yeah, Kokichi. I think he was probably lying about the door being locked to the rooftop as well. Since can he lockpick? But he was like, oh, I just couldn't go because, you know, I couldn't get in there. And it wasn't, I went back and checked and it wasn't the same type of lock that he lockpicked to get into Anji's lab. I was hoping that it would be because that would really prove that he was for sure lying about it. But this was a thumb turn lock and that one was a cylinder lock. I Googled it and it looked like it is possible to pick um, a thumb turn one. So I feel decently confident that he could have used his ultimate supreme leader lock picking abilities to get in there so but um yeah i feel like he's probably lying about that and he actually did meet up with miu oh yeah something you guys pointed out that i didn't notice and like a bunch of the comments were like how did weeby not notice this um before oma left saihara he said i would do anything to get the attention of the person i love even strangle them and then it looks like miu is being strangled oh <laughs> interesting I feel like Oma definitely has like some serious involvement in this case, but I still don't think he did it. Like I said in my last video, I always kind of believed he would have like some major involvement with another case or like I've been suspicious of him almost every single case of having some sort of big involvement but not being the culprit. So I think I was sort of right in my reasoning for believing that, but I just wasn't right with those trials and this I guess will be the one that he has huge involvement in, but he didn't do it and we'll just see how much of a little psycho he is at the trial. Like I said, I don't really know that I have like a prime suspect. I kind of like believe it could be Kibo just because I think that would be like the saddest turn of events or that would be pretty sad since him and Miyu are close. And also because yeah, Kokichi picks on Aruma in Kibo the most. So it's like, oh, it makes sense if he got super involved with the case that involved both of them. So that's kind of, I guess, my main suspect. I don't really have like good reasonings for it though, other than just like, I can't think of anything else. So I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of confused about this for a little bit. I think when I was uh, first playing through, I thought they were talking about the loading point was the thing that the wall she'd added, but I think it was actually um, the right wall of the black wall that was like at the end of the world. So basically, I think I kind of get what like her plan was. I just don't know who killed her and how and stuff like that or like a lot of like the things that have to do with her death I'm still really confused on. I don't think it was the poison. I don't really know why the poison was there or what the purpose of it was because she definitely like they said your eyes would be like bloodshot bloodshot like her eyes definitely don't look like super duper red so I think it would be super obvious if she took the poison so I guess not. It also didn't say I don't think um, when we were looking at the poison whether or not it was empty <laughs> or if like it had been used, I think it was just like, oh, there's poison here. It's an Oma's seat, you know? Okay, cool. <laughs> I don't think it said anything else, but yeah, that's kind of, I guess, mostly my opinions on everything. Like I said, I'm significantly confused on this. I think I understand everything Aruma was trying to do, but I don't understand who killed her, why, how, and stuff like that, so. I don't know, I guess I'll just figure it out the trial. Hopefully I won't get too, too stuck on anything. Uh, um. It looks like that's everyone. <laughs> oh, this everyone, huh? There are a lot less of us now. It's plain to see. This is just half of what we started with. Unfortunately. Because we've all allowed this game to continue, we must stop it somehow. Because people keep fucking killing each other. Right? <laughs> we keep talking about friendship and stuff, guys, but this keeps happening over and over again. Like, what's up? But we can't stop now. We can't let the fun end. 
Don't. Cut it out. I'm certain this trial will be the last one. I, I wouldn't hold your breath on that, Kibo. Hey. Let's focus on surviving this class trial first. I guess. You're right. If we mess up here, our numbers will go down even quicker. It'd just be the culprit left. But... That might be okay. Maybe that's just another way to stop the killing game. If we all die, then the killing game would end. What? Don't say stupid crap like that. It's pointless if we all die. Okay. Well, we don't have to worry. We've got the ultimate detective on our side. They're really pushing everything onto Saihara this trial, aren't You're they? You're right! Yeah, it's time for the detective to shine. Shuichi, please keep up the good work. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'll do my best. Yes, I have to keep it together. This is the only time my talent can shine. I'm not just saving my life. Everyone's life is on the line. If I can't find the truth here, everyone will be sacrificed. And I will never let that happen. Come on, man. Kind of interesting that, um, I guess Maki was saying before, like, Sahara, you're carrying the burden, like, way too much on your own. And pretty much everybody here is just like, yeah, Shuichi, you do everything. <laughs> you're the detective, so you do all the work, and we just kind of stand around and come up with ghost theories. So it is kind of interesting. I wonder if uh, there'll be some sort of development with that in the trial as well. Like, can we stop pushing everything onto Shuichi? Hey, Shuichi, you're getting all tense. Huh? <laughs> it's almost like everybody and their grandmother is putting, like, all their eggs into my basket. Uh, what? I mean... Didn't I tell you before? Shuichi, don't carry the burden all... Get it? And didn't I tell you before not to get in the way, Kaido? Yeah, pretty much. Huh? huh what's your problem? You really don't We're all relying on Shuichi to carry our asses through this class trial, okay? <laughs> pretty much, yeah, what I was just saying. We don't want to do anything, okay? He's the protagonist. It's just kind of how it goes. We have to let the player do everything, Kaido. Come on. You're like a parrot repeating the same lines over and over. You're bothering him. Well, yeah. I think that's the most annoying thing you could do to Shuichi, you know that? Huh? What do you mean? I'm not... Shut up. Kokichi, you're annoying. Please don't... Well, Killer Girl's glaring at me. I was only kidding around. Maki's glare seemed to do the trick, as Kokichi turned around, dejected. Jeez. Finally, that pest is gone. Thanks, Maki Roll. Just suck it up, Kaido. Now's not the time to be bickering with each other. Got it. Uh, my bad. Sorry. Um. Kaido, I'm okay. Hmm? Huh? Well. I know what you want to say, Kaido. You don't have to worry. I believe in I you. I see. In that case, I'll believe in you, and I won't say anything else. Shuichi. But if you have any problems, let me know. I'll help you. I'm here for you, bro. Thank you. Thanks, Kaido. Trying to help me out. I love how Oma's just like. Yeah, Shuichi is going to carry all of our asses in the class trial. <laughs> Did you hear some of that stupid stuff Samugi was saying last time? Like, dear God. Going to do his best. Going to not really understand what happened, but going to try real hard to be useful this time. Thanks, buddy. Hey! This time will really be the end. If not, then we're all totally screwed. I believe in you. I'll believe in you and won't say anything else. Shuichi. But if you have any problems, let me know. I'll help you. I'm here for you, bro. Thanks, bro. You. You didn't forget, right? Remember who you are. Make sure you never forget that. All these slackers trying to rely on you. That's so you must have it rough, Shuichi. That obnoxious guy is always bothering you. Shuichi. If you ever need my help, call me. I'll shut him up so he never gets in your way. Do you want my number? Um. Mew certainly wasn't perfect, but that doesn't mean she deserved to be killed. <sighs> no one deserves what happened to her. Not a single person. Hey, Shuichi. I'll be depending on you this time too, Mr. Ultimate Detective. Carry my slack. <laughs> Thanks, Himiko. Okay, let's go ahead and go. Rumble, rumble, rumble. Let's get her done. Let's 
do it. All right, let's go. Uh, okay. Yeah. The eight of us got into the elevator. The door shut behind us. And like all those times before, we descended. Yeah, we really are getting down to like the bottom barrel. It was dead quiet. The only sound I could hear was the beating of my heart in my ears. My body was trembling. The more I tried to control it, the worse it got. There's no way to get used to it, really, the fear of death. We were all fighting it, trying to be courageous. We all felt as though we were going to be our own... We all felt as though we were going to our own execution. No, not an execution. A test of our will to survive. Finally, the elevator stopped and the doors opened. And though I couldn't explain it, my body stopped trembling. Welcome! Welcome! Go ahead and stand behind any open podium! Uh... Ooh. Move your asses. You don't want to see what I'll do to you if you keep father waiting. Odin Monokuma, like, put him in his place. Like, I was really sick of you putting me above me, even though I'm such a good dad. Huh? Wait, is he back to normal? Why? Huh, are you not friend anymore? <laughs> I kind of realized how many death flags I was throwing up by saying all that crap before. You jerks must feel pretty slick using Monotaro's forgetfulness to befriend him. Nah. He just decided on his own that we were friends. You bastard! But I won't let you guys trick Monotaro anymore because he's already forgotten. He may have forgotten that he was on daddy's side. But now he's forgotten that he had forgotten that he was on daddy's side. Thanks to me, because I smacked the stuffing out of him. Yeah, how confusing. Well, whatever. Really? I can't remember, but one of you guys is the culprit, right? I, I can't be in the same room as a killer. It's dangerous. I'm going to lock myself in my room, maybe even set up a barricade. Yeah. That's another death flag. <laughs> anyway. You're starting to throw up too many. I'm starting to think it might be Monophy that dies. Let's get started. The heart racing excitement as the blackened and the spotless face off. The blackened and Sahara. Cause we're not gonna do shit. We went to our podiums as always. You know what we had to we knew what we had to do. There was no protest left in us. It's already the fourth time. The fourth class trial was about to begin. Yeah, her eyes don't look bloodshot at all, so definitely wasn't the poison. Definitely had to be in the game, too, so... I don't really know what the point of the poison was, is what I'm kind of more confused on. <laughs> Miyoruma, the ultimate inventor. She may have given us a lot of trouble, but we all miss her. It's a tragedy, after all. She helps me and Kaide with those cameras, gave Kibo extra functions. In the end, she had done a lot for us. And the culprit that killed her. is one of us. I need to discover who that is. In order to survive, I have to find the culprit. Dang, dude, so much red. And I will fight for it. I will fight with truth and lies in this class trial. Truth and Oma. Skittles. Dang, Uruma, you look bad. Okay, um, I got seven balls. I don't really think I can get a whole lot. Uh, I want to see what I got from Kokichi, though. Influence strain slower while a lie bullet is loaded. Effective during... Hell yeah! <laughs> Anything that'll help me with lies is what I want. Makes it easier to push the opponent back during blade lock. Effective during rebuttal showdowns. Yeah, I'll probably get this. I'm pretty bad at those. <laughs> Some of you guys um, were pretty nice about uh, helping me out with those. So I think part of the problem was that I was trying to cut, like I was moving the reticle on the side like the other person was on, and you said you can't do that. And so that was like one of the reasons why I was messing up at it. 
Some other comments weren't um, as nice about it. I think some people got kind of salty since I said that I thought it was just the mechanics that were messing up and it wasn't, I guess, as much of my gameplay. Believe me, I know I suck at playing these games. Don't worry, I know it's probably not partially all the game. I don't know, I just feel like I always really struggled with it, but I'll try to do, I guess, what you guys uh, recommended. Anyways, let's go ahead and begin. <laughs> now then, let's begin with a basic explanation. Ah, screw it. This is tiresome. I was up partying all night while you guys were in the virtual world. You need more motivation! I do. I really, really do. Now then, let's start this class trial. Before we start, I just want to ask something since there's not a lot of us left. <laughs> what happens if the votes result in two first places? Huh? You mean like a tie? It means they're both the black and as long as one of them is correct, it's fine. Interesting. Daddy, are you sure you should make a decision like that so casually? <laughs> Is that foreshadowing of some kind? Is that gonna happen this time? Yeah, it's fine. Whatever. Thanks. Since that's answered, I can start enjoying this life or death game now. What game? How long are you gonna keep saying that? Just ignore Kokichi. The rest of us need to work together to find the truth. Got it? We can't die here! Yeah, Himiko. Oh my! Himiko has become so determined! It's true! People really do change! Wonder if she's gonna be like, We can't wait around and do nothing anymore, guys! Tell him, Shuichi! I'm gonna wait around and do nothing while you tell him! But now she's lost what made her so unique. That's none of your business! Dang. We should focus on the class trial. First, we need to clarify... Kaito's the culprit! <laughs> what? Say that to my face! I just did. While we were all still logged in, Kaito logged out alone, right? You were able to move freely. Doesn't that mean you could have committed the murder? Don't screw around! There's no way I'm the culprit! Kaito right! Kaito couldn't have killed Mew. Yeah, I think she definitely had to die inside the game, so I was kind of figuring we would get the Kaito thing out pretty early on. How long are you gonna keep saying that? Trusted people can still kill, you know. We already saw that a bunch of times. So many times. Since Kaede. Oh, you fucking dick. The fact that Kaido was the only one logged out is suspicious. But he's not the culprit. He can't be. We have the log. Oh well. I'll just listen and see what they say. Oh, a poison killing game. Hammer. Monokuma file Kaito four. Logged out first by himself. Mew was still logged in though. That's when he poisoned her, right, Kaito? Kaito culprit? Impossible. Of course it's impossible, cause I didn't do it. I mean, we found that bottle of poison on Kokichi's seat, didn't we? The culprit was trying to pin the blame on me. That diversion was part of your plan, right, Kaito? Well, Kaito, any last words? What do you mean, last words? First, we need to decide if Mio is killed in the real world or the virtual world. That's where the problem lies. Kaito lies down. There we go. That's wrong. I didn't even see a V for that one. I think it came up later. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oopsie. Mew wasn't killed by poison, and the warning on the label proves it. Drinking the poison would result in subconjunctival hemorrhaging. Yeah. In other words, your eyes would be bloodshot. I wonder why Kokichi even felt the need to bring the poison, though, in the first place. Was it just to set somebody up, or... Was it to test Saihara's detective abilities? Or something like that? I don't know. Oh, but Mew's body. That's right. 
Her eyes weren't bloodshot. She wasn't killed by that poison. Yep. Then what was that poison for? Probably a diversion. The culprit wanted us to think Mew died by poison. Then, what was her real cause of death? Mew's real cause of death. The only one I can think of. Yeah, she had to have been killed uh, in the game, right? So she died of shock. I'm guessing. Balls. Okay, I didn't see this at first. It mentions... Uh, I forgot... Okay, I forgot they mentioned that it dies, that you die from shock in this. It was kind of confused. It was like, do we know exactly what killed her? But, okay. This is it! Mew's cause of death was the killing game simulator itself. That was like my initial thing, but it didn't like immediately click that uh, they said the shock thing in the killing game simulator. My bad. In the virtual world, if your avatar takes fatal damage, your real body dies of shock. That was made clear in the program's text file. Yeah. Miyu received fatal damage in the virtual world and died from that shock. In that case, it's fair to say that the cause of death was actually the simulator. Um, Gunta has question. Where is this virtual world place? What floor is it on? Poor Gonta. He has no idea if what's going on. If you don't understand, then don't say anything. If Mew was killed in the virtual world, then the next thing we need to figure out is what caused her to incur fatal damage within the virtual world. Yeah. So her cause of death in the virtual world is the one that matters. Uh, um. Poor Gonta. Oh, it seems like Gonta is confused. So why don't we review things a bit? Um, so we split into two groups to find the secret of the outside world. What does Karekio's thing look like? It's just kind of <laughs> a bunch of swirly red lines around his. I don't even get an X. I'm too fancy. The ones who searched the mansion were me, Shuichi, Samugi, Gonta, and that NPC Kaito. NPC. Hey, who you call an NPC, you ASS? <laughs> and the others who searched the chapel were Keyboy, Maki, Himiko, and the late Mew. How could someone have given her fatal damage in that situation? That's what we gotta think about. Now, let's all work together. Aww, little Himiko is all grown up. Too bad your chest hasn't grown up, though. Damn, gotta say the vulgar comments for me, I guess. That was uncalled for! Someday, my chest will grow like crazy! Let's begin, then. The fatal damage that Mia received in the virtual world. Let's pin that down. Yeah! Stop the bait. In the virtual world, Miu was fatally injured. So let's focus our efforts on that first. Whatever did that to Miu was dropped right next to her avatar. It has to be the hammer! Or That's just plain wrong, isn't it? Hands. Are we certain that blunt force was involved? I think strangulation is more likely. Strangulation? It's possible she was pushed from a great height. Could she have drowned? Okay, yeah, it probably is that. We have to determine the specific cause of death. If I think about the condition of Miu's body, that should yield a clue. Agree with Mach. Don't injured. know where the V was. So let's focus our Damn. efforts on that first. Did I get it? I, agree. Oh, I can never tell. <laughs> I can never tell with the consent ones. I don't know if I've ever gotten a V with the consent ones. Mew's body showed severe trauma and signs of a struggle. Okay, so even though she went into shock, she still kind of like emulated what was happening to her in the virtual world in real life. That makes sense. Yeah, she looked like she suffered. Very hard to look at. I guess it couldn't be Kokichi since if she touched him, um, like, although I wasn't suspecting Kokichi in the first place, I guess it especially can't be him now because if she touched him, then he would um, get paralyzed or whatever. So probably had to be somebody else. 
I mean, I already assumed it was, but I think that might be a way. I guess we have to prove that he didn't do it later. Right. And the virtual world is connected to our five senses. If her body experienced pain, she must have been in pain in the virtual world as well. Knowing that, I believe Maki is correct. Mew was strangled to death. It's almost like that thing I said right after you left, Sayara. I would have much rather strangled you, though. Yeah, definitely. Strangling and poison are the only methods that can make her look like she suffocated. But we already removed the possibility of poison, so it can only be strangulation. Also, when a victim is poisoned, they commonly grab their chest or mouth. But Mew was holding her throat. It's obvious she was trying to protect her windpipe. Yeah. It's a bad way to go. Oh. The Assassin Master gets really chatty when it comes to corpses. In that case, her exact cause of death is being strangled in the virtual world. But is strangulation even possible in the virtual world? If the avatars were equally strong, it would be difficult to strangle a resisting victim. I guess they could have used something to strangle her with. Yeah, if she was just as strong as them, no way they could have strangled her. Then the culprit would need a tool. Yeah. There are tons of cases where a weaker person would strangle a stronger person with a rope. Wow, you know a lot about killing, nerd. <laughs> Do you want to die? But was there even a rope in that world? I don't remember seeing one. Then they must have used something else as a rope. Like the toilet paper? Oh yeah, I guess because nothing can break in this world. Oh, so it probably was the toilet paper. She probably did die on the mansion then too. Or like on the mansion side then too. And I guess they just moved her body to the chapel side. Something for a rope, huh? I have an idea of what that might be. I found it during the investigation. Thank God, because I really had no idea what the toilet paper was. <laughs> At first I was like, what the hell? Toilet paper? This is it! Yeah! During the investigation, we found toilet paper outside the mansion. Is this toilet paper? What would toilet paper be doing here? I wonder why they threw it off the roof. I mean, I assume she got killed on the roof. Maybe not. I'm guessing that the toilet paper was used to strangle her. Why would they just leave it lying out like that, though? That's kind of odd. Gonta, no can ignore that. Gonta, don't make me do this thing. What do you mean, Shuichi? Huh? What's wrong? What wrong? Shuichi goofing off. Not gentlemanly at all. <laughs> you just don't really understand the rules of the virtual world or what it is, dude. So, come on now. It's no time for nonsense. No can use toilet paper. Okay. In place of rope. Would tear too easy. Ah. Even Gonta know that, and Gonta not smart. Okay, maybe I was just kind of fucking up moving it before. There's something off about Gonta's statement. I should be careful. No I think I just wasn't Would holding it down long easy. enough before. I guess. Even Gonta well said. <laughs> I was supposed to triangle smart. that one. Uh, da, da. Yeah. Advance. No, I'm. Positive. Dang, when am I gonna get to agree with that thing Would again? Tear too easy. There we go. <laughs> I'll cut through your words. Hell yeah, that was a really roundabout way to get back there. <laughs> the toilet paper wouldn't tear. Okay, I guess I was just kind of not doing it. I think like I would kind of like hit it and then like I wouldn't keep it down on there. I would kind of like keep going back and it kind of jumps when you do that. So I think that's what I was screwing up with before. Because in the virtual world, objects are unbreakable. Unbreakable? <laughs> You're so dumb, Gonta. You didn't even know that? If objects can't break in that world, then toilet paper shouldn't be able to tear. And since it couldn't tear, it could be used as a rope. Yep. Gonta not really understand, but... Poor Gonta. Sorry, Shuichi. Gonta was wrong. 
It's okay, Gonta. Don't worry about it. Killed by toilet paper. It was a fitting end for her. A fitting end? I do not fully understand that logic. But if Mew was killed near the chapel, why was the murder weapon by the mansion? Maybe the culprit tried to get rid of it to destroy the evidence. Yeah, I definitely think they killed her on the mansion side and then I guess moved her because I would explain the bridge with the Mirai Hill sign, so I'm gonna go with that. If the culprit meant to get rid of the evidence, they did a poor job of it, seriously. There was a much better place where they could have destroyed it. If toilet paper was the murder weapon, then what's the deal with the hammer next to her? I guess she was gonna use that to, well, yeah, I think she probably was meant to use... She probably wanted to use that to kill Kokichi. Because, yeah, she was just going to paralyze him and hit him upside the head. Perhaps the culprit prepared a backup weapon, just in case. No, the culprit didn't bring the hammer. Yeah, because she would be the only one to know about it. No? But who else but the culprit would bring a hammer? Wait, we already know who brought that hammer. The person who brought the hammer... <laughs> Monokuma. That's it. Yep. Definitely trying to kill somebody. Mew was the one who brought the hammer. Mew bring hammer? She's trying to do us all a, a solid and kill Kokichi. Remember what she told us? I rewrote the program to delete all dangerous objects that could be used as weapons. Yeah, she did say she deleted any dangerous objects. If that were true, she wouldn't have missed something like a hammer. Oh yeah, she's got three X's. Isn't that supposed to stand for like explicit or something? I feel like that's just something that's used in like, I don't know, like sexy stuff. Meaning that Mew must have left it on purpose. On purpose? But why she do that? Me brought the hammer for sure, but what'd she need to do it for? We need to make that clear. She was really trying to do what one of us should have done a long time ago. Kill that piece of shit. <laughs> oh, Let's man. Let's assume that Mew okay. brought the hammer. What was she planning to do with it? Maybe use it to break down a wall? Uses for <laughs> Hope it's Oma that says it. She was Don't trying to know, fucking kill me. Gonna build stuff with hammer. She probably just brought it for self-defense. Or she secretly met up with someone. <laughs> and tried to kill them with it. I wonder who that was. You idiot, she was the victim. <laughs> Whoever was it that she was trying to meet up with? God, I just don't know. What was Mew's plan doing with the hammer? That's still unclear. I need to think back to what she was doing. What her plan was. Let's assume. I love how excited he looks about it too. Yeah, I'm too lazy to get the V. I'm not good enough for you, Sayara. Damn straight. Mew was gonna meet up with someone in the virtual world. Mm-hmm. With me. I was supposed to meet up with Mew on the roof of the mansion. What? Is that true? I overheard them talking about it at the chapel. By the way, Mew asked to meet up with me before we went into the virtual world. Didn't he like help her with the virtual world too? I, oh, damn it, I meant to go back and read some of that stuff because there was like a weird thing between them. I wonder if he like told her something that he was planning on doing and that was why she wanted to kill him too. Because I mean, he was already crazy. So I can kind of understand why she'd want to kill him in the first place. But he did have like, you know, a huge plan that he was ready to unleash as the ultimate supreme leader. So I kind of feel like, yeah, maybe he told her he was like about to, I don't know, do this super awesome plan to kill Zaihara or like kill a bunch of us or something. And that was why she felt the need to kill him too, you know? I totally forgot where we were supposed to meet. So good thing Keyboy spied on us. <laughs> Wait, so Miu called Kokichi out? If Mew brought the hammer, I wonder what she was planning to do with it. <laughs> Beat you upside the fucking head with it. Kokichi's already figured it out. She was planning to... Kill Kokichi. Make someone kill Kokichi. Plan a murder. Confess her love for Kokichi. 
<laughs> I'm gonna go have to go back in and select that in my free time. <laughs> Confess her love for me. <laughs> she was trying to kill Kokichi. <laughs> oh man, I bet that's funny. I bet he was just like, yeah, of course, everyone's in love with me. <laughs> Damn it, I wish it would have been Sayara. She was what? Yep, she plotted to meet up with me and then kill me with the hammer. If you want to prove this, you'll need to figure out Miu's plan, okay? Miu's plan, huh? I'm sure if I analyze the clues we've found, I can figure something out. Alright, let's do this! Psych Taxi! Yeah, okay. Oh, it's got that weird picture of Miu up there. Who tried to kill Kokichi? The world will never know. Never freaking know. It's obviously Kamida. Can't believe he's back in this game. Kaido. Kibo. <laughs> in my dreams. Back to the pink orbs. That might possibly represent Kaido, maybe. Yeah, where was Miu trying to kill Kokichi? On the rooftop! <laughs> Yay! In Kamida's room! Probably. World. Oh, the virtual world. Yeah! Why was a bottle of poison on Kokichi's seat? Oh, there's a little cute picture of Samugi. Thinking time. Okay, I'm gonna have to like pause this right when it comes up. I have no fucking clue. Um, it was misplaced hidden evidence to divert attention. To divert attention, I guess. Yeah. Yay! I got it. it got him. You're sucking less hard this chapter so far, Weeby. She wanted it to appear as if Kokichi was killed in the real world. She placed the poison on my seat to make us think the murder happened in the real world. Okay. I mean, like, it's kind of like with Terry Terry if she was trying to kill him because, like, he said he was going to do something worse. I feel like it's kind of like Terry Terry when he was like, well, I was just trying to kill Kamida to save all of you. Ooh, ooh. But then it was like, yeah, but you were trying to also save your ass, too. So <laughs> it kind of seems like it's the same place if she's trying to set it up to make it seem, um, you know, like... She killed him, or like somebody else killed him a different way. And she was gonna frame Kaido, I guess, for it by logging him out early. That makes sense. She did that too? What? Miu was the one who put that poison bottle there? I kinda figured it would be Kokichi. No, that ain't right. Something's definitely weird about that. When could Mew have put the poison there? If she did place the poison without us noticing, then she must have logged out at some point. And then what? She logged back in? Kokichi, weren't you in the salon around that time? Did you see her log in or log out at all? Nope, I didn't see that at all. If she hadn't logged in or out, then Mew couldn't have placed the poison. Then who put poison bottle? The only person who logged out early was Kaito. Kaito, your grave just got ten feet deeper. No, it wasn't no. me, guys. Seems we've touched a nerve. The poison has planted evidence. The question is, when was it? When it was planted? If we determine when, we might also determine the who. When could Mew have put the poison there? The yeah. That's wrong. I didn't get the V. Damn it. I feel like I'm just like on the edge of it every time in this trial so far. It was Mew who planted the poison on Kokichi's chair. She had plenty of time to do it. Here, take a look at this. Is this a record of who went in and out of the virtual world? Yeah, she was the last one to log in, so she planted it then, I guess. That's right. It says that Mew was the last of us to log in. Shady. 
Yeah, what about it? If she logged in last, she would have had time to move around in the real world after the previous person logged in. That right! She could have placed Poison Bottle on Kokiji's seat! This was all part of Mew's plan. I'm such a victim here. She tried to kill me in the virtual world, make us think it happened in the real world, then pin the crime on Kaito. Yeah. Well, that's not my fault. Which is why she manually logged you out, just for that purpose. Okay. So she did that to me? Yes, I'm positive of that. Mew used a method only she could use to log Kaito out manually. How did Mew log Kaido out? The cell phone! Where is it at? Yeah! This is it! It was the cell phone found by Mew's avatar. That cell phone worked the same way as the phone in the salon. It logs users in and out. I verified this myself when I spoke Kaito's name into it. Kaido Mamota. He logged out, just as I thought. I see. With that cell phone, she could force anyone to log out at any time. But Mew never mentioned a cell phone, right? That's what Shuichi referred to when he mentioned a method only she could use. Yeah. She kept the cell phone a secret on purpose, so she could use it for the murder. I feel like it was kind of like a smart murder idea, but at the same time, I feel like we would have been able to figure it out pretty easily since she made the whole virtual world, you know? So, she really was planning a murder. I guess maybe she planned on, like, hiding the evidence better after she killed, so then she could be like, no, I know it looked like Kokichi got hit upside the head with a hammer, but definitely wasn't a hammer in the files, guys. So I guess it could have been a really good murder scheme. If we would have all trusted her words so much, but I don't know. And she tried to set me up. Well, I knew that from the start. Then why did you say I was the culprit? <laughs> For shits and giggles. Because I wanted to get it through your thick skull. People you trust and defend will ultimately betray you. This is a game of suspicion. Ugh. Well, I think your ideals should stay the same. Because phonies like you are what make the game more interesting. Don't you agree, Monokuma? Hmm? Do I? I don't know about that. <laughs> huh? Wait, what were we talking about? His voice sounds so weird when he's sleepy. I wonder when Daddy's gonna get his motivation back. Yeah! If Father keeps slacking off, all the work is gonna get forced onto Mommy. Is he acting like that because Himiko has lost her shtick? Like, I was gonna take over Aruba's shtick, and now I'm gonna take over Himiko's. That kind of looks like he has, like, shells on his, uh... Ugh. Oh, yeah, he's got, like, bolts on his. He's got shells on his. It's supposed to represent the Jersey Shore, because he sounded like he was from Jersey. Uh, he's got little lightning bulbs. <laughs> He did sound like he was from Jersey. And he had those fierce, fierce-ass eyelashes. If father keeps slacking off, all the work is gonna get forced onto mommy. Huh? Huh? Mommy? Oh, it's coming back. My head! I feel like I'm about to remember something, but I can't! I feel like that's a reference to something. What's wrong, Monotaro? Pull yourself together! I think I'm just thinking of, like, every movie that's used that as a trope at some point, like the, uh... I remember so clearly, but it's just not reaching me. Probably this game, too, because they do that all the time. Anywho, it's a blessing in disguise that Mew died and not me. What you mean? Because she wouldn't have said anything about what really happened in the virtual world. You guys would have had a way harder time finding the culprit, you know. She would have been able to lie about the virtual world settings as much as she wanted. Yeah, it was a smart idea. And you'd never know that the murder actually took place in the virtual world. So that's why she decided to attempt a murder. Because she had total control. And the reason Mew was so insistent we go into the virtual world was... 
You guys are only bitching because you haven't been to the virtual world yet. But once you go, you'll understand. Seriously, it's so fucking awesome. I know you guys will love it. And then you're going to fall in love with me for showing it to you guys. So let's just dive right in, okay? We'll do it together. Just the tip of the virtual world. She was insistent we go there so she could kill us. What a shady person. <laughs> Seriously. I was sad that she was gone, but now I don't know what to think. <laughs> nice! Backstabbed by a trusted friend. See? That's an ideal fun situation! Now we can start a real class trial! <laughs> You're getting way too excited about this. Hey, Kokichi sort of sound like Monokuma. Hmm? Really? I don't sound anything like him. No, you're just like Monokuma. Both of you are cowards. You never speak the truth or show your true face. Wait, coward? You say some interesting things sometimes, Kaito. Dang, they're about to like duke it out. They really do seem to be like complete polar opposites to me. Smiling, putting on a mask, never saying what you really think. That kind of cowardice is just like Monokuma! Daddy, they're calling you a coward! Aren't you gonna do something? Yeah, yeah, I just gotta do my signature laugh, right? Hoo -hoo -hoo -hoo. There, I did it. <laughs> He's completely lost his drive! Like a one-hit wonder who clings to their former fame! Listen up, Kokichi! To hell with this game of suspicion crap! I will never be okay with it! I'm just gonna believe in everyone! Instead of suspecting my friends, I'm gonna find the truth by believing in them! Dang, dude, you sound like Nagi. I feel like that's stuff that Nagi used to say, like, all the time. I think uh, Kaido represents the lull hope, and then I guess Oma represents the lull lying. If you think you can win this game like that, then sure, be my guest. Of course I can. I don't need your permission. It worked for Nagi, dude. How long are you guys going to argue? Let's hurry this up and continue. If we don't find the culprit, then we'll all die, you know that? Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. If we are going to begin searching for the culprit, let's start with Kokichi's story. Huh? My story? You were meeting with Mio, but she ended up as the victim. So it's only natural for us to think you're the killer, right? Here's my answer. I never met up with Mew. I definitely think you're lying, dude. Mm -hmm. You didn't? I tried to go to the roof to meet up with her, but the door was locked. But isn't lock picking your specialty? You should have been able to open it easy. I couldn't pick locks with my avatar body. I didn't have the tools for it either. <laughs> oh, well, maybe I was wrong about that. I didn't even think about that being in the virtual world and making it different. Also, I never went to the roof. Not even for the meeting. I remember you and Gonta went off together when we first started looking. But was the door to the roof actually locked? When I was on the roof before logging out, the door wasn't locked. Huh? How should I know? Then who locked the door to the roof? I already told you! How should I know? When I went to the roof, it wasn't locked. So you gotta be lying. What good would it be if I lied? I don't want to die either, you know. Lying would do you a lot of good if you're the culprit. Oh, <laughs> like glitched out I for a see. second, I think. I didn't realize that. What kind of response is that? That's suspicious as hell. Wait, there's no point in arguing about that now. The truth will come out eventually. Before we get to that, we need to discover the truth behind Mew's death. Truth? There were mysterious circumstances surrounding her death. We need to make sense of those first. 
Wow, Shuichi, you know your way around this game. Yes, keep up the hard work. The fate of our lives rests in your hands. So, what is this strange circumstance? Kokichi claims it was Mew who chose the meeting place. But I'm wondering how she got from the chapel to the mansion's roof. Yeah, through the river. Right? I see. Mew sent the bridge connecting the mansion and chapel into the river herself. Whoops, my hand slipped. If that's the case, then Mew might not have even gone to the roof. Huh? So she stood me up? It's very rude to break a promise. <laughs> <laughs> a promise to kill you? It's true, we first need to determine if Mew is actually there or not. Did she go, or was she never on the roof at all? Definitely went to the roof. I think she traveled through the river, right? Because you can't allow noises, Mew's corpse. Mew setting was on waiting Kikichi's for me avatar. to arrive. I'm sure she was waiting on the rooftop of the mansion. No, Mew should have been at the chapel. Look at where her avatar fell. It's right next to the chapel. How would she have gotten to the mansion? There was no bridge over the river. A bridge would be the only way to get across. So, her meeting with Kokichi... She stood me up! <laughs> At first glance, it seems as if it's impossible for Mia to go to the mansion. But there has to be some evidence that shows it was possible. Mew is waiting it's a movie, for right? to arrive. Ball sack! I didn't even see that. What? No, damn it! Oh, okay. Oh, it's so close to the V, though. <laughs> no, I should have waited to just redo it again. Damn it! You must have gone to the mansion. We have a witness. Yeah. When I was searching the dining room, I saw Mew pass by the window. Sorry, I thought I was just mistaken at first. I was just waiting for Saihara to do it since he's pretty much gonna handle all of our asses in this trial, kind of like what Kokichi said. Since there was no way she could have come to the mansion, but I guess I wasn't mistaken after all. That was definitely new. Then, how did she get to the mansion from a chapel? It must have been some special method only Mew knew, like with that cell phone. There's no doubt about that. That's why she dropped the bridge. If a murder occurred when it was impossible to cross the river, she wouldn't be implicated. She used a secret method to move from the chapel to the mansion for the murder. She dropped the bridge to make a huge scene just to let everyone know it's no longer there. So, what secret method did she use? It won't be that easy to figure out. It's called a secret method for a reason. No worries, guys. As long as we leave it to Shuichi, everything will be A-OK. -okay. You're about to play a mini game. What? What are you saying? We can't just rely on Shuichi all the time. This class trial's for all of us. We're here to solve this together. I kind of like that they're actually like, I don't know, not breaking the fourth wall, but bringing up like, isn't it kind of funny that there's one person that does, like, all the work in these class trials, usually? <laughs> you would just slow down, Shuichi. I could have sworn in the first class trial, it was like the first half, Kaede was doing all the work, and then the second half, Shuichi was doing all the work. Isn't that funny? Shut up! I don't have time to deal with Kokichi. Right now, I need to focus on the case. Carry everybody's asses. I'm positive that Mia used some kind of special method to get to the mansion. Okay, I just have to figure out what it was. See what they bring up, the wall or the river. I guess it was the wall. Mia cross it only Mia knew about. Like a hidden bridge besides that signboard maybe. Or instead of bridge, Mew used some kind of vehicle to go over. Or maybe she teleported with magic. Or she used a warp zone. Maybe there's a place you could cross without a bridge. A 
hidden route that only Mew could use to get across. Where is the V? There I it is. I suppose it is possible she used that to change places. Man, you guys are way off. Or maybe I'm just pulling your legs. <laughs> totally. A secret method only Miu knows. She tampered with the program. It's hard to imagine that has nothing to do with it. I'm sure she changed something. Way across it on the Yes! <laughs> I agree. Finally, good god. Took me forever to get the V in this one. <laughs> That's it, Kibo. There was a hidden route only Mew could use. Hmm? Was there really? Mew modified the program to add a special wall to the world. The wall stretches along the Y axis, but we found two such walls in the virtual world. It's unclear whether Mew added the wall by the mansion or the wall near the chapel. We do know that that wall was set so that only objects could pass Don't through. Don't be naive, Shuichi! <laughs> Kaido, come on. Mm -hmm. What is it, Kaito? Jeez, you set up a weird wall like that? That is suspicious, but it's got nothing to do with what we were talking about. Nothing to do with it? Huh. You don't even realize your mistake? Are you losing your edge? Oh well, my sidekick's mistakes are my mistakes. I'll make it right. Ah, uh, come on, dude. Okay, let's do this again. Mansion of the world, Mew's avatar. What we gotta figure out is how Mew got from the chapel to the mansion. So why waste time talking about it's pointless? We gotta take a whole new approach here. Yes. Now wait just a second. It's not actually impossible at all. But you just said so, didn't you? That wall Mew set up only lets non-human objects go through. Humans aren't able to pass through. No. So Mew obviously wouldn't be able to go through that wall. She's not just an object after all. You get it? So let's go through this one more but, time. Damn. There's no doubt that Mew was able to pass through that wall. I need to give some proof for that. Okay. But you just said <laughs> Mr. <Indian>? Avatar. <sighs> that wall Not just an object. There we go. I'll cut through yeah. the The wall wasn't the only thing that Mew changed. She also changed her avatar settings from human to object. Get Rex, son. From human to object? Which means the virtual world treated her avatar as an object. She could have passed through a wall that only non-humans could go through. Is that right? Don't get ahead of yourself, Kaito. We need to listen to everything Shuichi says. I already told you, the more you try, the more you cause us trouble. It's so totally lame that your own sidekick is dissing you! Oh my god. Kokichi, enough! I wasn't arguing with him. I was just explaining. I don't care. That doesn't bother <laughs> me at all. He's trying to break us up, dude. Can't you see it? It just means even I make mistakes. Don't worry about it, Shuichi. No. Okay. <laughs> it's pretty funny seeing Kaito try to act all tough like this. Kokichi, please refrain from making such irrelevant and irrational remarks. Actually, if you could just not talk for the rest of the game, that would pretty much do it. So, if Mew messed with the program and made a wall only she could go through, then her secret route was through that wall? That's it, right? Like using a glitch in a game to walk outside the map. I bet Mew had a hidden passage like that in the back of the chapel. But even if she could walk through walls, was there really a hidden passage? Because Mew said... No, you're not trapped here. Beyond that wall is the end of the world, literally. Past that wall, nothing exists. Everything ends there. She probably lied. There would be no point in going if there was nothing on the other side. You lied. Hmm. I 
I wonder what the truth is. There's no way to find out now. That cum-soaked urinal cake was totally lying about there being nothing past the wall. She lived a life of pride, vulgarity, and secrets. Lying would be a piece of cake for her. Kichi, you know have to go that far. Stop it! Don't badmouth mommy! No, oh, you remembered. Uh, Mama Taro. Listen to you talking about mommy like she was a terrible lying whore. But mommy wasn't lying. There was no hidden road in that virtual world. <laughs> Am I about to have to do a rebuttal showdown with you, Monotaro? Starting to look like that. Uh, oh, there wasn't, huh? Hey! You can't tell them such an important hint! Oh, so you actually did tell them? Oh, so I was just baiting them, wasn't I? Well, kinda. Okay. Oh! If you say that hint is important, then I guess it must be true. I <laughs> got him. Oh, shoot. Ah, jeez. You're lucky you're cute. Was Kokichi saying all that stuff about me to get the cubs to reveal something? Yeah. I guess I should thank him, but I have no idea why he does things sometimes. So now that we know there's no hidden root, why did she manipulate the program? If there's actually nothing past the wall, then that setting was meaningless. I think it just loops around. I guess it still could be true what he's saying and it could just loop around because that's all I can really think of. It looks like, yeah, it looks like it would kind of loop exactly if you were to just, you know, fold it or whatever. It would just loop around again, so I'm still going to go with that. You wouldn't have done something meaningless. She would have had a plan. Yes. Mew definitely wanted to be able to go through that wall for a reason. We aren't sure why yet, but once we solve the mystery of the virtual world... Mystery of... virtual world? There have been a lot of strange occurrences in the virtual world. If we can determine why, we will also determine what Mew was up to. We'll know why she wanted to pass through the wall. Alright, let's clear up those strange occurrences. Yeah, Gonta will help, even though Gonta not know what you're talking about. Speaking of strange occurrences, I'm just plain worried about that one thing. Remember? That thing that made us notice all the strange occurrences? The events that led us there. Let me go through really quickly. We're being so vague about this. You know that strange occurrence that set up those other strange occurrences? He's talking about like just in general? I don't remember there being anything in general that was really strange with the world. They might be talking about this. She's probably talking about the loud noise, right? Because Mew said that we weren't supposed to be able to hear anything past the loading point. But yet we heard Kibo and we both heard a crash on both sides. I'm guessing. Oh, balls. What strange occurrence happened in the virtual world? I'm gonna go with this. This is it! Okay, sweet. Just making sure. You mean the loud sound that you and I heard in the kitchen? Ah. Uh. What? What was that sound? It sounded as if something was struck very hard. It came from outside, but... Hmm? You all heard that sound too? Yeah. Yes, in the mansion's kitchen. But that sound occurred near the chapel. How did you hear it all the way at the mansion? First off, sound can't go past the map loading point. Did that sound really come from the chapel? I wish we would have tested that out, you know? I feel like that would have been a smart idea. Like, hey, Kibo, you stand next to the church and say something really loud. And I'll stand on this side of the loading point, And then we can figure out if it really did happen or not. I'm really surprised we didn't do that. So yeah, I guess we'll either find out that she was lying about the loading point, not hearing sound through it, or that somebody made a loud crashing noise on both sides to confuse the case. That's my guess, at least. That sound was something hitting the chapel wall. 
It was real loud. I kind of lean towards the second because like, I don't know, it sounded like it was really loud on our side too, you know, and it's, they said like hitting the chapel wall. So maybe, I don't know, it feels like you couldn't, I don't know. And we definitely heard it. We heard Kibo's voice as well. Yeah, she was probably just lying about, well, <laughs> I go back and forth so much. Okay, no, so she probably was just lying about the loading point if we heard Kibo's voice as well, unless he did something sketchy. I should stop overthinking this. For now, let's go outside and check. Oh no. What? That was Kibo's voice, right? I think I heard him outside. He sounded close. You heard my voice too? What? That is pretty strange. Exactly. That has to be some kind of clue to the mystery of the virtual world. Okay. Well, let's check the answers later and try to find all the other clues first. This is going to be too important. We need to wait till the end of the trial. There was another mysterious phenomenon in the virtual world, wasn't there? Kokichi talked like he noticed something. Pretending not to know? Even Gonta is suspicious of me? I always <laughs> thought you would be the one to trust me! <laughs> Gonta looks pissed. Sorry. Going to not mean it like that. Oh. There's no need to apologize to him. He's probably just lying again. What was the other strange occurrence? Did you see it, Shuichi? Another mysterious phenomenon. Something that shouldn't be possible, like Mio in the mansion or that loud noise. I need to remember everything else that happened in there. Mine, mine? Oh. Okay, show question. What weird phenomenon happened in the virtual world? There we go. Yeah. <laughs> the clock in the stove. It was that Smoogie wasn't making me dinner. That was a weird occurrence. The sign that we were using as a bridge was odd to me. Sayara, I kind of see why Kaede was a cool with dying now. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm such a gentleman. Odd how? Weeby's voice has made me so nice and loving. What are you talking about? We mentioned it before, but Mew dropped the sign in the river. Whoops, my hand slipped. We found it later, but there was something unnatural about it. Finding the sign was definitely weird. I'm most confused by how the sign got there. I should remember exactly what happened with that sign. All right, here we go. Psych taxi, oh wow, another one. Oh no, they're moving now. Okay, it's not too bad. You guys don't want me to hit you? <laughs> yeah, there we go. These cars are about to start swerving on me, aren't they? There we go. At which point was the signboard swept away? When Mew threw it, right? Oh, Kamida, you still curse me to this day. River, mansion. Which point? River, right? Yeah. I was thinking like time frame, <laughs> not like a uh, location. I guess you can use point for both. There we go. Where is the end of the river? It's the black point, right? The hidden wall or whatever you call it. Let's see what name they give it. Point, mansion side, chapel side. Where is the end of the river? Chapel side, right? Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> I see anything happen when I hit the walls, but I assume it's not good. Okay, let's get the Kaide blocks. Yeah! Oh, Kaide blocks, you don't move. This is why you were the best girl. Damn it, Kaide blocks! Why you gotta move now? Where was the signboard found after it was swept away? The rocks! Oh, we got four this time. So used to there only being three. 
Oh, sweet, I get a fourth babe. I'm so, so stoked. Okay. Mansion side. Is transition point gonna be the next one? Since they've had uh, that question twice? Oh, whoa. <laughs> well, one way, this is kind of freaking me out. <laughs> okay. I should probably just stop trying to be MLG gamer. I know I'm not. Fuck. Okay, I didn't hit the car. Compared to the river's current, which way did the signboard float? Well, it just went through the wall. But, like, I don't know exactly what they're going to be looking for right now. Against the current, with the current. With the current, right? Kind of. Oh, fuck. Maybe not. Against the current. Okay. I bet. I was thinking because it like I was thinking of the looping around thing. So I don't know. Still got him. Still got him. It appeared as though the sign was carried against the river's current. Yeah, I see what they're meaning. Like it went the opposite direction. I was just so like I guess since we haven't established the loop yet, I was uh, thinking ahead too much. We all saw Mew drop the sign and watched the river carry it downstream. And the river was wide there. The sign should have traveled downriver toward the chapel, correct? Oh, wait, got cut by the loading point or no? It should have hit the wall on the far side of the chapel and stopped there. But that's not where we found it. We found it near the mansion, nestled in some rocks. The signboard should have been near the chapel, but we found it on the other side. Hold up. Didn't you stay on the chapel side? She probably grabbed the signboard from the chapel wall to cross the river. Then left it on the boulders near the mansion so she could get back. Why would she leave the signboard where it could get swept away and leave her stranded? Also, this has nothing to do with walking through the wall, right? We're getting off topic. Didn't you change the topic? We're so close to the truth. We just have to connect the how and what. Okay, I think I am right about the loop, though. All the mysterious things that happened have to connect with each other somehow. Connect how? A wall only objects can pass through. Sounds that shouldn't be heard. A signboard going against the river current. How are they all connected? <laughs> I don't know. But Shuichi should know, right? <laughs> and tell him, Shuichi. I'm what? so fucking sick of hearing that. We would be in a lot of trouble if you didn't. Damn. The only one who can solve this mystery and save us all is you. It's almost like he knows about Suichi's weakness and is trying to, like, use it against him. But I thought you loved me, dude. So, how are they connected? Do you know Shuichi? Ah, well, what we know so far is that... The unnatural way the sign was carried is possibly related to the wall. What clue is related to the unnatural way the signboard was carried on the river? I mean, you just said it. The wall, right? I feel like it's gonna not be that, though, since they just said it, right? This is it! Okay, I was like, they just said it so, like, clear as day. I was like, they really want me to choose it? objects can pass through. The sign should have stopped at the wall on the other side of the chapel. But if that wall happened to be the one that Mew set to allow objects through... I see. It's a wall only non-humans can pass through. That means the signboard can pass through the wall, right? Even if it could pass through the chapel wall, how did it end up by the mansion? The only way it could do that is if the wall was a warp zone. But it's not, right? Yeah, there's no warp zones in this world. 
That's right, that's the real issue here. How could the signboard pass through the wall but end up on the mansion's side? What would explain that? Leave it to me, Shuichi. I, your partner, will give you hints in times of trouble. <laughs> Thanks, best boy. What? This is the virtual world. We should throw away all of our common sense, okay? Huh? The hell does that even mean? Kukichi might be onto something there. We need to forget about what we know and just think about it. How did the signboard pass through the wall downstream and end up upstream? Putting common sense aside and focusing on the flow of the river. How did the signboard pass through the da, 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 da. Another signboard. The signboard teleported. Downstream and upstream connect. Teleported. That's it. Yeah. Why do I always say that? What if both ends of the river were connected? Huh? Both ends of river connected? Exactly. To put it another way, the river isn't cut off at the wall near the chapel. It's all part of one big loop. The upstream part of the river is connected to it. I kind of thought we would get like a hangman's gambit and it would be like, loop effect. <laughs> Why did we need to include the word effect to that? What? What are you talking about? Both ends of the river can't... Again, throw out all common sense from your head. We're talking about the virtual world. Then what about the wall? There was only one wall that could be passed through. Right. Even if the river's connected and it goes through the chapel wall, it wouldn't have been able to go through the mansion wall too. That was one thing I was kind of confused on. I'm sure I gotta prove it though. Wait, in that case... I got it. I know why Mew only set up one wall. What are you talking about now? The reason she only set up one wall is because the chapel and, man and the mansion walls. Oh, are they the same wall? One wall was already in place. They're the same wall. They're your exact duplicate. They're the same wall? That's it. Okay. The walls by the chapel and the mansion aren't separate. They're the same wall. The same wall? It's not just the river. The walls themselves are connected. Okay. Don't think of it as two separate walls but a single wall parallel to the y-axis. Okay, so she could have literally just walked off. That single wall divides the entire virtual world. <laughs> the idea is you pass through the wall by the chapel and come out by the mansion. Okay, I can see like the concrete is connected to or these little walkways. I guess like the walkways or whatever they are are connected as well. So, okay, very clever. So she could have just walked across. I was thinking she used the river to travel. Starting to connect. See, didn't I tell you? Everything is connected. Damn it, Kokichi! Just tell us. It's okay. More importantly, this is the final stretch. If both the river and wall are connected, then you can find the secret. Shuichi, you already know the secret behind the virtual world, right? I do. The secret, huh? Yes, I suppose we should clear that up. We need to solve this mystery of the virtual world. It's gonna be a hangman's gambit. I was like, this seems like a hangman's gambit. What effect do we get this time? Oh, loops. <laughs> S, that's it. It was like world loop, loopy. <laughs> Loople, world loops. Okay. <laughs> yes, that's it. The virtual world is a loop. Loop? Just like in old games, right? Like, for example, 
when a character goes off the left side of the screen and reappears on the right. I like the Flintstones. Yes, exactly. The edges of the virtual world are linked together in a continuous loop. The virtual world loops? What in the world? If that's true, it would explain the way the signboard was swept away. It vanished into the wall downstream of the river, came out of that same wall upstream. And floated with the current until it got caught on the rocks. What was the world like before Mew added the wall? Actually, there wasn't a wall on the y-axis at all, and the x-axis was set to loop. Okay. Are you serious? Even if it is a computer program, isn't that too crazy? A looping world. That's more extraordinary than even magic. But at least it's not a boring answer. It also explains all the things that happened. Huh? It doesn't explain everything, does it? Because we still don't know why we heard that one sound or Kibo's voice. Do we hear it because of the loop? Like we heard it coming from the other side? Since, I mean, the world connects. Does that make sense? I don't really know. Yeah, sound doesn't go past the nap loading point. Actually, if we know that the world is a loop, we can explain that as well. Okay, maybe that is right then. Huh? Really? Yes. But first we need to be clear where the loop starts. Where the loop starts? Doesn't it loop at the walls next to the mansion and chapel? Hmm. Not necessarily. If we heard a noise at the chapel from inside the mansion, then the loop... Okay, I think that's what they're trying to say. I don't know. I know they're probably gonna bring up the picture and make me choose exactly where the loop starts. That's why I'm like, I don't really know that I know exactly where they're gonna want me to choose though, you know? That's why I'm like, uh, I know what you're trying to say, but I don't know what you want me to do <laughs> exactly. I kind of just figured the loop would start, you know, just the whole side. I don't know that it really made too much of like a difference. Yeah to me where the exact point is, but I feel like that's what they're about to ask. Yep. <laughs> what did I say? Where's the looping points? I really don't know. There. Okay, okay. Now I get it. I think. Kind of. The map loading <laughs> point was where the virtual world looped. We thought the loading point was in the middle of the map. But the loading point was actually at the edges. Okay, okay. I just kind of guessed, really, when I picked on it. <laughs> oh, okay, then that makes sense. Yeah, interesting. So the wall we created wasn't at the edges of the world, but rather... Okay, so she showed us the other map to confuse us for the murder case, too. So that was how she messed with the map when she was acting all sketchy about it. Her wall was at the center of the world. I see. So the mansion and chapel were near each other, with a wall between them. And any sounds emitted near the chapel would also reach the mansion. The wall only allows non-humans to pass through, so sounds should be able to pass through easily. That's right! That's how the virtual world works! Yeah! <laughs> Impressive, Shuichi! Oh god, that laugh was a little scary, jeez. For you to get this far, yes! 
Yes! You are useful indeed. Okay, you definitely know, like, everything that's going on in this case. I swear, I think this is, like, maybe he wants to... He has some involvement, and he's like, I want to test out Saihara's skill, especially since nobody else does jack shit in these trials. Except Maki and me, sometimes. For you to get this far... What are you, some villain pulling the strings? <laughs> Probably. Nope. Mew pulled the strings here, not me. Remember? Mew also set this trap. It all began when Mew showed us the map. Because of the map, we mistakenly thought the loading point was at the center. Which in turn, made the mansion and chapel seem farther away from each other. But the structure of the world wasn't actually like that. There was a wall along the y-axis, and the x-axis came around in a loop. I wonder, um, what the lattice and the hammer and stuff- I mean, I guess the hammer she was just using to kill Kokichi with. I don't know why the culprit didn't, like, do anything with it. I'm still like, interested to know what the lattice was used for. Because uh, the only thing I could really come up with before was, like, they got the lattice and the hammer and just started, like, banging it. Or, like, they banged it really loud by us and then banged it again by the chapel. And I wasn't sure why we heard Kibo's voice. I just figured, nah, screw it. <laughs> Not gonna focus on that. I have no clue. No clue how. But, yeah, I wonder what the lattice is used for. By putting that wall in the center of that world, she cut off the loop. So ever since Mew showed us that map, we were caught in her trap. But we solved this mystery thanks to Shuichi. All hail our savior! <laughs> God, so extra. Yeah, if Shuichi wasn't here, then we never would have solved this mystery. We would have died back in like chapter one. That's right. Good work, Shuichi. Thanks, Shuichi. You saved us. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> oh. Just because we found out the virtual world's secret doesn't mean we can take it easy yet. Actually, this culprit hunt just got to the exciting part. Even if we know all the tricks, it's pretty meaningless if we don't find the culprit. That's how a class trial works, after all! Kokichi talking like Monokuma again. <laughs> yeah, for real. We've been hanging out. No matter what you say, I'm not gonna believe your lies. We've been hanging out a lot, Gonta. Me and Monokuma, we get boba tea together, go to Starbucks, get matching pumpkin spice lattes. It's pretty cute. I'm gonna believe in everyone. That's how I'm gonna reach the truth. Talk about killing each other, killing other people. Oh, it's a great time. <laughs> I can't wait to see what happens next. Um, what is Kokiji's plan here? He's definitely prodding at Kaido on purpose. Well, there's no time for distractions like him. What we have to do is find the culprit who killed Miu. It doesn't matter how many little mysteries we solve, if we can't find the culprit, it would all be for nothing. But I still don't know for sure who it could be. Who used Miu's own plan against her to kill her? Who killed Miu? Intermission! Aww. Man, I'm bushed. I got no motivation at all! And Mona Fanny Fonny's period is late too! <gasps> oh. um. Father, why do you know Mona Fanny's cycle? <laughs> I'm just gonna say Mona Fee. <laughs> it's too late. It's too late. It's already in my brain, guys. Father. Why do you know Monafi cycle? I'll, if I do any kind of analysis video and I mention her name, I'll say Monafani for like, or Fani, or however the crap you say her name. I'll Google how to say her name, <laughs> right? But for the Let's Play, I'm just gonna stick with Monafi. Father, why do you know Monafi cycle? And another thing. Never mind that. Perhaps this lack of motivation is due to a lack of hibernation. Yeah. Lack of hibernation? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't been sleeping well lately, so I haven't really been able to hibernate. Mm -hmm. That's awful. What could be causing it? Ah. Is it because you have a lot on your mind? Huh? huh? Mm. 
Is it because the graveyard shift pays a better hourly wage? Huh? huh? Really? Is it because you don't want them to think you're just goofing around? Huh? huh? <laughs> what? Whoa, I don't really understand this. What does this mean? Is it because you want to stay friends? Huh? Is this a reference that I don't get? Is it because you want to watch it in real time? Huh? Huh? <laughs> you just kept saying that over and over again. <laughs> Father. He's gone into hibernation. We should let him be. Oh. Yeah, you're right. Night, night. <laughs> It'd be fucking crazy if, like, Monokuma died in execution. <laughs> Well, the Monocubs is like, I'm taking over now. <laughs> I know that totally wouldn't happen, but that would be literally... I think I would, like... My brain would explode. Kind of like that. Together. All these memories of my past life. I, I feel like I'm forgetting someone important to me, but... Uh, I just can't. This is giving me, like, three, five, eight days flashbacks. My head. My head hurts so much. I just... Have you forgotten? Now, Maybe that's for the, the best. Threshold of an amazing adventure. From this point forward, let's start a new life for ourselves. One. After all, our baby is excited to meet his daddy. You know? I'm gonna vomit. Daddy? Wait, what? I'm gonna be a father? Two. What would Kaori say? What a colossal death flag. I'll be surprised if he doesn't die after that. <laughs> I love Himiko just like totally breaking the fourth wall with this. <laughs> you are so fucking dead, dude. More importantly, let's continue the conversation where we left off. Okay, I really hope it is Monophy after all these death flags <laughs> that he's throwing up. And then uh, Himiko can be like, holy shit, for real? <laughs> are you serious? That was like... Ten times as many death flags as Rontaro threw up, and that guy had like fifty. We understand Mew plotted the murder, but we need to find out who killed her. And in order to figure that out, we need to understand Mew's actions. So let's discuss her murder scheme step by step. I know that's important, but hearing you lead the conversation really pisses me off. Dang, they really have some tension going on between them now. Let's see. You manipulated the virtual world to use it as part of her murder plan. Don't just ignore me and start anyway. Damn. If she had succeeded, she would have gone past the wall between the chapel and mansion. It's really weird hearing uh, Kaido get so mad. Like, I'm used to hearing him be like, I believe in you that believes in me, Shuichi type of thing. And I don't know, to be like that. I'm not used to seeing him like this, where he's like so pissed off that he's like quiet, you know? And then wham! Murdered me on the roof with the hammer. She would make the murder seem like it happened in the real world, and then pin it on Kaito. As for Mew's alibi in the real world, she could say she was locked into the virtual world. And in the virtual world, she could say she was near the chapel the entire time. <laughs> She'd make an excuse about how she couldn't reach the mansion because of the fallen bridge. Left my hand slipped. Why isn't this in sepia? She dropped the bridge on purpose so she could separate the chapel from the mansion. I guess because it's more animated. Then secretly passed through the wall she installed and took advantage of the loop. Smart plan, Miu. After she headed to where we were supposed to meet up, the mansion's rooftop. Oh yeah. Kaito was probably logged out around that time, too. Dumbass. That's when I saw Mew. Problem is, because of her murder plans, we don't even know where she was killed. She was killed on the roof, right? Kokichi told us the roof door was locked and that he couldn't get through. Maybe that when Copra kill her. That's probably what happened. The culprit killed her on the locked roof. Did the culprit lock the door to the roof? 
perhaps. I don't think Mew did it. If Mew did lock it, she would have done it when she called Kokichi to the roof. Even if someone came up, I don't believe she would change the target of her plan. Yeah, <laughs> she really hated that guy. She knew that Kokichi would come up later. Locking the door would be suspicious. Well, it's possible she didn't even think that far ahead. She was smart, but she was also really, really dumb. No say such mean things. Killing game bad, not Mew. Mew not bad person. Going to think we could have been friends if things different. That might have been difficult. Even without this killing game. God, they all really hated me, didn't they? That wouldn't happen. Nah, -uh. No way, Jose! Damn, I kind of feel bad for her. Huh? Anyway, let's continue the discussion. If Mew was killed on the roof of the mansion, the culprit must have moved Mew's avatar to the chapel after killing her, right? So the next thing we should talk about is how they moved her avatar. Now we know the mansion and chapel were actually next to each other. But the problem is the wall between them. Only Mew was able to go through that wall. The culprit wouldn't have been able to. Then you're saying the culprit sent Mew's avatar through that wall? Oh, like they just threw her? That makes sense. Yeah. That's the only way, right? I guess they must have figured out the wall at some point, though, when they were um, inside the virtual world. I feel like Kokichi is the only one who could have known about it before, but like I said, it's like, it can't be Kokichi. It's just way too obvious. And plus, I just really, like I said, I really don't see him dying earlier than Chapter 5 if he does die, you know? And his lab hasn't opened up, but I feel like he would be the only person to know about the wall, so... But how did the culprit send Mew's avatar through the wall? I mean, it's not like they could have thrown her. Don't her not throw her! We know. You couldn't because the avatar's physical strength was equalized. Oh yeah, true. Physical strength equalized? <laughs> Poor Gonza, he's just so lost this whole trial. <laughs> it's okay, buddy. Just go take a nap. That problem. Gonta no can protect everyone if that happens. <laughs> We kind of already covered this, dude. It's okay, we'll, we'll wake you up when it's finished. Jeez, keep up with us. We're already in the second half of the class trial. Hmm, how did they send Mew's avatar to the other side of the wall? Maybe that thing has something to do with it. You know, the loud sound you heard. The lattice, I guess, is what they used to move her. Oh, it was through the rooftop. They uh, put her on the lattice and then I guess just like use that for her to slide down. I'm guessing. And then that would make sense. Yeah, because it would have fell off of our roof and then hit the mansion wall. So I gotcha. I gotcha, Danganronpa. Ah, what was that sound? Because of that sound, you guys went to the side of the chapel. Right, Keyboy? That's when you found the dead Mew there. Right? If so, then I think that sound and her avatar being by the chapel are related. Yeah, there's no doubt in my mind that the noise is related to this case. We need to figure out what that sound could have been. It might be the clue we need to solve this case. So what was it? It sounded like something slamming hard into something else. What were those two things? It could be. Hammer hitting the wall, cell phone, lattice hitting the wall. The lattice hitting the wall. I mean, like, I was thinking they did both, right? Oh, ball sack. Mew hitting the wall? That's it! What was the lattice used I for think then? The sound came from Mew's avatar hitting the chapel wall. The hammer, cell phone, and lattice were there, but they were too small to make that noise. 
I'm not sure if I'm gonna edit it out or not, but I was thinking they put her on the lattice and then down the roof. That's why I chose lattice first. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Moving <laughs> those out, the only other explanation is that the sound was Mew colliding with a wall. If that's the case, Mew's avatar must have hit the chapel wall really hard. Yeah. He felt the impact all the way from the inside of the chapel. Yeah, that's the real question. Mew's avatar probably hit the chapel's wall with pretty considerable force. But why did it hit the wall with such force? Can you guys figure it out? It was the roof. Hold on, Kokichi. What's up with the way you're talking? Why are you talking like you know everything? <laughs> For real. Let's not worry about that right now. More importantly, we gotta solve the mystery. Fighting among friends is a waste of time. I swear to God, I think... I, God, I'm starting to feel like he set somebody up, almost. Or like... I don't know how he would do it. But maybe he like influence somebody to kill someone else or something. I feel like nobody else in the trial, though, is like acting suspicious, though. <laughs> That's kind of like wigging me out, too. Like, I don't know, I feel like... You know, if he, like, was setting somebody up, they might be like, Kokichi, why are you bringing this up, dude? Or, I don't know, like, I don't know. He definitely did something with this case, but I'm a little confused as to, like, what and how and, like, it's like there's no, there's no way he's the culprit, right? That's just way too obvious. And, like, it, like I said, it just really, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel like he's the culprit, but I definitely feel like maybe he, like, set somebody up or, like, Something? I don't know. Friends? Us? Anyway, can we talk about that after we figure this problem out? A way of transporting Mew's avatar that would cause it to crash into the chapel. Getting Mew's avatar to crash into the chapel from the mansion's roof. There's only one way I can think of how to do that. Hey, Shuichi, as your partner, I'll give you a little <laughs> I'm really trying super hard to replace Kaido. <laughs> you what? Since the mansion was on top of a hill, the roof was pretty high up, right? No, I figured they'd make us answer that. Past the brick handrail, the roof was at a pretty steep slope. And the slope faced the chapel wall. On top of that, there was snow on the roof. <laughs> If the culprit needed force to move the body, I wonder how they did it. Um... Kukichi is talking as if he's got the whole thing figured out already. I can't let him distract me. I need to solve this case. How to make Miyu hit the chapel wall from the roof of the mansion? I'm going to find the answer. Hangman's Gambit! Oh no. Uh, hit Monokuma! Yes, hell yeah! How have I gotten so lucky for all of this? Slid off roof, okay. The culprit used the sloped roof as a slide for Mew's avatar. Slide? Aw oh, man, even with the slope and the snow, Mew's body wouldn't have slid. Wrong, it would slide. But the avatars can generate friction. We wouldn't have been able to walk otherwise. So I doubt that it would have had that much momentum. But they use the lattice, right? No, no. It would slide. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it wouldn't slide. No, no. Just like Maki Roll said. It would slide. Just like Shumai said. Shumai? Who the hell is Shumai? <laughs> His little nickname for me. Oh, he's a pupil of Roman Man. Uh, sorry, my hobby slipped in. Oh, never mind. Some reference. I'm positive that's how Mew's avatar was moved, but... Maybe the culprit used something else as well to help her body slide. Can I feel bad for Kaido? I've been agreeing with Kokichi a lot. I'm sorry that he's right about everything. Even if her avatar slid off the roof, would it slide off that quickly? Well, duh, it would. It didn't whoosh, make whoosh, that much whoosh. noise. It must have built up a lot of speed. 
Lots of snow piled up on roof. But not frozen solid, right? We'd still slide, though. No, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. In the whoosh. real world, it might be difficult. But in the virtual world, perhaps not. That's not the issue. Sliding down snow is easy to do. You just need a sled or skis to cut the friction. There was nothing like that around, though. Oh, I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> That's wrong! At least I got the V, right? No, wait. There was something that could have been used to help slide Mew's body. I kind of feel bad for Kaido. I think he might want to be like, Shuichi, stop disagreeing with me. <laughs> what are you, best friends with Kokichi now? What the fuck? Do you remember the lattice that was found by Mew's avatar? The culprit laid her on top of that, then used it as a sled on the roof. I did notice the lattice in the storage room when I first looked. But during the investigation, I saw that it was gone. The lattice that was found next to the chapel is the one that disappeared from the roof? Then that's it. The culprit used the lattice as a sled. Ding, ding, ding. That's correct. Dumbass. After the culprit killed Mew on the rooftop, they placed her corpse on a sled. <laughs> we get a little chibi culprit version, too. <laughs> Cute. And slid her down the roof's steep slope. The sled picked up speed, flew off the roof, glided through the wall only objects could pass through, and hit the chapel. The impact made all of her belongings scatter, including the hammer and cell phone. Just like that hedgehog who loses all his rings whenever he crashes into stuff. I... I hate that guy and his worldwide fame and his stupid games and I hate that <laughs> hedgehog! <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Best celebrity feuds coming up. Me versus Sonic. I've never really played Sonic, to be honest. Daddy, I'm glad you're feeling motivated again, but you shouldn't be so hateful. <laughs> My hatred for Sonic has revived me! Yeah, gotta be an example to our new family. Yeah, father. Or should I start calling you grandfather now? <laughs> I kind of think Monofi might die, then like, we'll, we'll lose the baby too, oh no! The incest bear baby with three heads and... 16 toes! He would have been so beautiful! Arr. Now that we know how the body slid down, we're just one step away from the culprit. Oh, is Monokuma gonna do it? He's gonna be like, I may sound like a grandma, but I'm still hip and young with the kids! I don't want no incest bear, baby! Well, Shuichi, do you know who the culprit is? Um... The culprit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck me. Do I have to choose? To guess the culprit, huh? <laughs> I was like, I'm really hoping we're not getting close to the choosing thing because I still don't know. But Gonta can't believe one of us killed Mew. However, since we know she was killed on the roof, we can narrow down the list of suspects. It's true. Meaning, the culprit must be someone who was investigating the mansion. Aside from you, the people at the chapel could not go through the wall or cross the river. So that means the suspects are Kaito, Samugi, Shuichi, and Gonta. That's real sneaky, leaving yourself off the list. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. <laughs> oh, you got me. Come on, dude, it'd be way too obvious if it was me. That's right, five suspects. Me, Samugi, Gonta, Kokichi, and Kaido. Can't, oh, fuck me. I think, shit. It can't be Kaido because he logged out. 
Ren when she died. Obviously, it can't be me. I don't. I don't think it's Kokichi, because it's too flippin' obvious. It leaves it down to Samugi and Gonta. Ah, uh, fuck me. Is it gonna end up being Gonta because he didn't know anything about the virtual world, and then like Kokichi set him up to do it or something like that? Fuck me. That's gonna be awful. If that's the case. Yeah, I don't... It couldn't have been Samugi, though, either, right? I don't think. Yeah, it couldn't have been her, though, because... We heard at the same time, unless, like... She could have set it up somehow to, you know, something, like, to break. But we would have seen something about that, right? Fuck me. Is there anything that proves it's not Kokichi? I mean, like... I don't think it's him, because, like... He's being way too much of a piece of shit about it. <laughs> Fuck me, did you make Gonta do this, you little piece of shit? What did you do? I hate this game. I thought I was your favorite character. I thought you loved me so much, Weeby. Aren't you super stoked about my character analysis video? I am, but... Okay. We don't know enough to name the culprit yet, but one of them is suspicious. When we were talking about the rooftop, they clearly lied. But what reason would they have to lie? That was Kokichi, right? We need to press them for information before making any judgments. Who is the liar? Jeez, I wonder who it is. <laughs> it's you. You're a fucking liar. Subscribe to Weeby News for more hope-filled videos.